In this video, I show how to make a pierced pot. This pot I have little lights in, operated by a battery. In this video, I wanted to make a pierced form. I'm going to be throwing a vase that I'm then going to pierce. If you ever have a particularly difficult piece of clay to center, just try the coning method. Now, if you start to get an indent right here, like on this, just take your hand and kind of push down at an angle on the corner. That'll help to bring that middle part back up. If you ever struggle though, coning is a really nice way to help you get it centered with a little less difficulty. If you ever have a hair, <laughs> you want to try to get that out right away, which I happen to have a hair that just landed on my hand. No doubt it was one of my own, but... Since I'm going to pierce this, I'm going to try to make it as smooth as I can on the exterior. And there we go. There is my base form that I will be piercing. Okay, so my vase that I threw yesterday is leather hard. I need to kind of tidy up the bottom, if you can see down here. I'd like to really just take a rib, knock some of this off, give it a more, uh, I have an angle down here. The angle will um, prevent any real thin edges from wanting to chip off. And it also will give me a logical place to stop glazing. Okay, so, okay. so I have the bottom of my uh, vase ribbed. I'm going to go ahead and start creating my uh, dots. Okay, now that I have scraped away the extra with the rib, now I'm going to just go through, kind of clean up the holes a little bit. Um, I can take the drill bit uh, just by hand. I do not need to have it in the drill to do this. I'm just going to clean out some of the debris that's in there. So I'll do that for a few minutes and then I'll come back.
My fired vase has come out of the kiln. Now, because of the process of drilling this, it is very, very dusty. So I am going to uh, rinse it very well on the inside to get out any of the loose debris and dust. All right, I have now rinsed the pot. I did actually wax the bottom. If you uh, need to see that, you can always see one of my other videos on, on uh, how to glaze and how to apply wax and everything. Um, I have taken a little needle tool and I've kind of pierced some of the holes just to clean out any debris that I might so see. So as I look at it, sometimes there's just a little bit of debris that gets stuck in some of the holes. <sighs> and I just wanna make sure that it is uh, cleaned out, looking as good as it can get. Okay. So, I have my uh, glaze ready right here. This is a Coyote Peacock that I'm going to be using. I want to make sure it's mixed up well. And then I'm going to go ahead and dip it. Now, dipping something like this, it's going to definitely drain and I am going to want to turn it upside down. I'm going to actually hold it through one of the holes because I find that to be kind of a nice way and I don't think it's going to be too awfully... Uh, um, you know, distracting with the glaze if I happen to have a finger mark. So I'm going to dip it in, kind of rotate it around, make sure it gets totally submerged, and lift it up. And hold it upside down when I do this because I want to encourage the excess glaze to drip up off the top. Now, I'm going to have to take a few minutes and I'm going to have to come in here and I'm going to have to uh, clean out some of the holes because you can see some of the holes have uh, closed up right away so as this is beginning to dry you can see perhaps where some of the holes have actually closed up so I'm going to take I can either take a needle tool like a pin tool um, I happen to have a salt and pepper drill that I'm going to be using which I think works really well and I'm just going to run this through actually the drill is probably not necessary until it actually dries a little bit more I'll just periodically clean this off so it's mainly the small holes that I'm mostly concerned about I do want to try to keep those holes from closing up 